Hi, I'm Miley Oye. I'm a member of Google's Webmaster Support Team, and I'd like to help you better understand how to use the URL parameters feature in Webmaster Tools. We've covered the background information. Let's now talk about the types of URLs that are eligible for this feature. Here's one from the Google Store. It says category equals office. Other URLs would be things like category equals wearables or category equals wearables and size equals medium. These URLs are eligible for the feature because they come in key value pairs or name value pairs. What it looks like is key equals value and then perhaps an ampersand and then key two equals value two. And Google, when we see these parameters, will treat this URL as equivalent to this URL because the ordering of the parameters doesn't matter. URLs that are ineligible for this feature are those that don't use the key value configuration. So if a site uses a bunch of plus signs to separate their parameters, or they just use a directory structure, or they use their own type of encoding, none of these types of URLs can actually be used because this feature requires the name value pairs. All right, I know that was a long intro, but now let's get started with the feature. Step one is to specify parameters that don't change the page's content. So you can ask yourself, do I have parameters that don't affect page content? Things like a session ID, an affiliate ID, or a tracking ID. These types of parameters don't change page content, and so in the feature, you can actually mark them as does not change content. And once you've set that, Webmaster Tools will put one representative URL as the setting, and then Googlebot will act accordingly. Once step one is completed for all the parameters that don't actually change page content, then let's move on to step two, which comes in two parts. The first part is to specify the parameters that change page content. So you'll select, yes, this changes, reorders, or narrows page content. And then you can have a type of page content effect, whether that sorts, narrows, specifies, etc. And we'll cover more of this in depth. Then the next part is step 2B, which is to specify Googlebot's preferred behavior. So given that parameter, how would you like Googlebot to actually crawl those URLs? And we'll talk more about this as well. The first parameter I'd like to cover is the sort parameter. And we're covering this first, but it's a fairly complicated parameter and setting. The sort parameter is something like sort equals price ascending or rank by equals best selling any of these types of parameters that just change the order that the content is presented. These are sort parameters. Once you've identified a sort parameter or sort parameters on your site, the next part is to specify Googlebot's preferred behavior for when they see URLs with this parameter. Now, this can get pretty tricky, so I have two scenarios here. Let's go through the first scenario. You could ask, is the sort parameter optional throughout my entire site? Meaning that the sort parameter is never displayed by default, but only with manual selection. If you can answer yes to that question, that yes, it's optional throughout my entire site, then go on to question two. Can Googlebot discover everything useful when the sort parameter isn't displayed? Meaning that we can actually crawl all of your items even if no sort parameter is present on the URLs. If that answer is yes, and the first answer is yes, then it's likely that with your sort parameter, you could specify crawl no URLs. Once you've applied this setting, please verify that the sample URLs displayed in Webmaster Tools are in fact not canonicals, so they're just duplicates, and that the canonical URLs, the URLs that you really want crawled and indexed, can be reached by regular user navigation. If the first sort parameter recommendation didn't apply to your site, then hopefully the second recommendation will. The second recommendation is if the same sort values are used consistently site-wide. The questions to ask yourself are, are the same sort values used consistently across my entire site? So a negative example of this where the user would say no is if you're a webmaster selling things like coins and coin albums. So for your coins, you might have sort equals with the value year issued. 
but sort equals year issued doesn't apply to your selling of your coin albums, so it's not used consistently. If the answer to the first question is yes, then you can ask yourself the second question, which is when a user changes the sort value, is the total number of items unchanged? If that answer is also yes, then it's likely that with your sort parameter, you can specify only crawl URLs with value X, where X is one of the sorting values that's used site-wide. If neither of those recommendations apply to your sort parameter, then perhaps select let Googlebot decide. The second parameter that I'd like to cover is the narrows parameter. Narrows filters the content on the page by showing a subset of the total items. So you probably see this on an e-commerce site where in the navigation, a user is able to select if they only want to see items that are less than $25 or $25 to $49.99. All of this is narrowing the content of the total items. Examples of the narrows parameter are size equals medium, less than equals 25, or color equals blue. If the narrows parameter shows less useful content, shows content that's just a subset of the content from the more useful URL, which doesn't include the narrows parameter, then you might be able to specify crawl no URLs. For example, a useful URL is category equals YouTube, and the less useful URL is category equals YouTube and size equals medium. Here, I might specify size as a narrows parameter, and then because it has less useful content, I can say crawl no URLs. But before I specify crawl no URLs, it's good to verify a few things first. First, be sure that the narrows parameter won't also filter out useful pages that you'd like crawled and surfaced in search results. So if you have brand or category pages that you'd like to show to users, be sure that when you select crawl no URLs that those brand and category pages won't be affected. Second, verify that example URLs that might be displayed in Webmaster Tools are really URLs that provide non-useful content when compared to the parent URL. So again, you see content like category equals YouTube and size equals medium, and you know that the size equals medium, that narrows parameter, just isn't useful. If the behavior of crawl no URLs just isn't optimal for your site because it affects too many important brand or category pages, then perhaps let Googlebot decide. The next parameter is specifies. Specifies determines the content displayed on the page. For example, item ID equals Android t-shirt or SKU equals 495. The specifies parameter is responsible for the actual content and so you'll likely select crawl every URL. After specifies is translates. Unless you want to exclude certain languages from being crawled and available in search results, like auto-generated translations, unless that's the case, then it's likely you'll select crawl every URL. As an aside, one best practice that I'd like to mention, and this is by no means a requirement, is to put your translated or regional content not in a URL parameter, but actually in a subfolder or a subdirectory. The reason why is that in a subdirectory or subfolder, it helps Google to better understand your site structure and that this applies to translated or regional content. The last parameter is paginates. Paginates displays one component page of a multi-page sequence. Examples are page equals three, view items equals 10 through 30, or start index is 20. With paginates, because you want us to crawl every page to reach all of your items, it's nearly always crawl every URL. Congratulations, you've finally gotten through the discussion about the different parameters and the desired Googlebot behavior. And now you can go back to your site and repeat this process for the different parameters that you have. You don't have to do this for every single parameter, but just including a few and specifying the right Googlebot behavior can really help with your crawl efficiency. We're almost done, but you might be asking one last question, which is, what about multiple parameters in one URL? For example, SKU equals 234, page equals 3, and sort by equals price, etc. How does URL parameters work when there are multiple parameter settings? The answer is to remember that URL parameters is about crawling your site more efficiently. 
so you can imagine that all URLs that we know about for your site. So if you're the Google store, all 380,000 URLs begin as eligible for crawling. And then we work as a process of elimination, not inclusion. So we take our knowledge of your site, combined by each of your settings and URL parameters to slowly weed away the URLs that shouldn't be crawled until at the very end we have a smaller subset of good URLs. To recap, if you're now more comfortable with URL parameters, please utilize this feature for more efficient crawling of your site. You can start with specifying the parameters that don't change page content. Those should be easier to do. And then after you've done that step, the next step is to specify parameters that change the page content. And remember, if you can't determine, don't guess, please let Googlebot decide. One more time, the sorts parameter. If the sorts parameter for your site never exists in a URL by default, then crawl no URLs. Or if site-wide the same sort value is always used, then crawl URLs with value X. For narrows, if your narrows parameter causes non-useful filtering for searchers, like size or price, then you might select crawl no URLs. Just be sure to double check that none of your important pages will be affected. For specifies, it's usually crawl every URL. And the same applies to translates and apaginates. Yay! I think we've covered a lot of information about URL parameters. Here are links to more resources if you want further help. Thank you and best of luck.